a lot of stuff happened in week two of the NFL. And there's some clear ways to improve your fantasy teams. Here are eight wide receivers you need to add now in fantasy. Starting with Sterling Shepard, who was the Giants' number one wide receiver. As you can see from my tweet, he earned 32% of the Giants' targets week two. Consider him the number one. And this 32% led to 10 total targets. But that's not all. Because as you can see here, Shepard played 66 snaps, which ended up equating to 90% of the Giants' total snaps. Meanwhile, the top paid wide receiver on the team and Kenny Galladay, who signed that four-year $72 million deal just a year ago, played just two snaps in week two. And we know the rookie Wando Robinson is hurt and Kadarius Tony seems to be in the doghouse, leading to Shepard being the clear top dog. And this is great to see. Shepard now in 24 career games with Daniel Jones averages 8.2 targets per game. Very good volume. That's 140 targets for the year and 14 and a half fantasy points per game, which is clear top 20 usage. Do not let this guy stay on your waivers. So get him and then this next wide receiver. And that would be Jets rookie Garrett Wilson, who is a must add. He joined the starting rotation week two after being the wide receiver four in his NFL debut week one. And this led to an elite 35% target share week two. This is higher than what Devontae Adams averaged last year in Green Bay. The rookie now has 22 targets in two weeks. He had 14 targets in week two. But check this out. Garrett Wilson only played 43 snaps week three. It was 23 less than actually Elijah Moore, who operated as the wide receiver one. So just 61% of the snaps for Garrett Wilson. And he still put up these numbers. This means he wasn't on the field in that many two wide receiver sets. But when he was, he dominated and it also means there's a lot more upside to be unlocked if he starts playing over Corey Davis and plays 20 to 30 percent more snaps and let's not forget how elite he was at Ohio State he earned 26 percent of the targets when he was playing there and that was while playing alongside first round pick Chris Olave who had a great week too Jamison Williams who's on the IR but also a first round pick yes he did play out at Ohio State at one point and then projected first round pick Jackson Smith and Jigba who's a top three college wide receiver right now that's how good Garrett Wilson is so acquire Wilson and his former college teammate and that would be the man we just discussed in Chris Olave who actually played over Jarvis Landry week two something we did not see week one he played five more snaps than Landry and he actually ran 41 routes just one less than Michael Thomas and these 41 routes ended up equating to 85 percent of Jameis Winston's dropbacks that's elite usage it led to 14 targets which was more than Michael Thomas and Landry had combined but it doesn't stop here because as you can see here from Nathan Jonke who's a fantastic analyst he works for PFF they've never had a player in their database see 13 or more targets in a game and a 25 average depth of target or higher which is what he saw this week that means a lot of deep targets never has it happened before this usage is elite and very unique to Olave all of that basically means is he's going to see deep targets and deep targets lead to explosive plays and fantasy points so get Olave and then get this third year wide receiver and it starts here with Jerry Judy ending up injuring his shoulder in week two and not returning to the game he will have more tests but there's a chance he's going to miss time and if he misses time KJ Hamler, who missed week two with injury, but is expected to return week three, will see the slot snaps for Denver, and here's why this matters. Russell Wilson loves his slot receivers. You remember Doug Baldwin? Yeah. You remember Tyler Lockett? Yeah, you do. And as you can see here in 91 career games with Russell Wilson, Tyler Lockett averaged 13.6 fantasy points per game, which is top 20 wide receiver usage, and Hamler's on waivers in like 95% of leagues. And Hamler is younger than Lockett, who was a top 20 wide receiver just last year with Russ, and he has top 1% speed of all time, faster than Tyler Lockett. So add Hamler and this Patriots wide receiver. And that would be Jacoby Myers, who saw an elite 38% of Mac Jones targets on Sunday. That translated to 13 targets and no other wide receiver saw more than six. So he was more than double the next closest Patriots receiver here. This is elite usage. And now across 17 career games with Mac Jones, Jacoby Myers averages over eight targets per game. This is very solid usage. Should not be on any wave of wise. Go add the fella. And then add this rookie who's already breaking out. It would be Penn State alumni and Washington Commanders rookie wide receiver Jahan Dotson, who now has three touchdowns in just two NFL games. And he is a clear top two option on this team. He led the commanders with 53 routes and 73 snaps. Both of those were decent and significantly more than Terry McLaurin, who saw six less routes run. So add this first round pick and then get this injured wide receiver while you still can. And I'm talking about Rondell Moore, who is a must add right now. He's available in about 80% of leagues. And if you're seeing what Greg Dorch is doing right now, being a quality receiver, at least putting up fantasy production, Rondell Moore is a lot better than Greg Dorch and he's going to 
to take that role right back as soon as possibly this week when he's healthy. So here's what you need to know. Moore is expected to see Christian Kirk's old role when he was with the Cardinals, which consisted of Moore ranking top 15 in deep targets, something that Rondell did not see at all last year, one of the worst average depth of targets. He was not getting downfield usage, which hurts your fantasy production, but this year he's expected to see this new role. But that's not all. Because with that usage, Christian Kirk finished as a top 30 wide receiver just a year ago, and this could be Rondell right now, who's available in 80% of leagues. And Rondell Moore is a better athlete than Christian Kirk, both when it comes to burst, top 3% of all time, and speed, top 5% of all time. That's going to help get separation downfield when he returns. So go get him, and then also get this sneaky wide receiver. And I'm talking about Ashton Doolin, who actually operated as the number one wide receiver this past week in terms of usage with Michael Pittman and rookie Alec Pierce out for the Indianapolis Colts. And as you can see here, Ashton Doolin played 32 snaps, a very solid snap share. He's still going to be a top three receiver, even when Pittman and Pierce comes back. He already beat out Pierce, and he has 12 targets already through two weeks, and he's a solid option in this passing attack because Matt Ryan's number two options have finished as top 40 receivers every year, including Harry Douglas and Mohamed Sanu. And Ashton Doolin is a solid athlete when it comes to burst, catch radius, speed, and he's going to be somebody who's a lot healthier than Paris Campbell, and he's a better red zone weapon than Paris Campbell because of his elite catch radius, and he's 6'1", 215 pounds, so he's a bigger body down there. So make sure you grab Ashton Doolin. And then you also want to grab my waiver wire tiers that I send out every single Monday so you know exactly at every single position who is the best option and where that tier breaks off. You can do this by clicking the link in the description below, which will take you to a page to acquire my Supreme Cheat Sheet, which includes the waiver wire tiers, rankings, projections, and a $20 Amazon gift card. Yes, all of these beautiful benefits for you. And that page will then redirect you to our proud partners in prize picks. And once you deposit the minimum on their site of $10, I'll then send you the following morning all of the beautiful material from the Supreme Cheat Sheet and that $20 Amazon gift card. And if for some reason you don't like it all, I'll refund you $10 minimum deposit. You can keep the gift card and the tools every single week of the year. Yes, risk-free for you. So if you want to join the thousands of other people using this material and beating their league mates, then click the link in the description to learn more. And then make sure you add Michael Gallup because he can return as soon as this week, week three. And he would instantly become the number two wide receiver in Dallas. And I know what you're saying, but oh, Cooper Rush is out there, but he hasn't been that bad. CD Lamb's averaged 10 targets per game through three games now with Cooper Rush. And this past week in week two, two wide receivers, both Noah Font and CD Lamb put up over 14 and a half fantasy points each, which is borderline top 24 numbers. And not to mention, Dak Prescott is going to return at some point this year. And that's great news for Gallup, who earns over seven targets per game, 120 plus target pace when Dak Prescott is out there. Add him now before it's announced that he's returning week three. So these are the eight wide receivers you should be looking to add. And if you want to see in what order you want to add them, well then get those tiers in the Supreme Cheat Sheet link below. And if you want to see the seven running backs you need to add before week three right now, then watch this lovely video right here, you beautiful people. And if you're not already, the 40% of you that are not already subscribed to this here lovely YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button.